Hi Miles, thanks for the footage and um, the feedback's great. Good to see that you're, uh, you're getting happier with your swing. The overall action is much improved. I just thought I'd take the time to put some sort of historic lines on there that we've used in the past just to go over a few of the key positions in the swing. I think the progress you've made has been fantastic. I was looking at your swing earlier from November 2015, which is when we both started working together online. And, you know, the change is fantastic. The overall action there is really good. I just want to go over a few things that you you may want to sort of consider in regards to the overall action before going into uh, some relatively simple details that relate to removing the pull uh, from your game that you described courtesy of your message on Twitter. So, historically from... A pretty good setup position. Um, in the past, you've had a few issues with your foot flow. I think I would say, from an overall standpoint of your setup, I would maybe go slightly wider with the stance, but only fractionally, just to give you a little bit more stability. Um, and I would look at turning the right foot out just a little bit more. Um, again, just to balance things up, really, just to calm down the sort of rotational aspect in the through swing maybe a little bit um, to allow you to turn a little bit more freely during the back swing but just a it's just a tidying up process from p1 to p2 we stay nice and stable from face on but we see the head drop down and go forward slightly so what that's suggesting is that the rate at which the lead shoulder works downwards, which is fine, so the lead shoulder should work not straight across, never straight down, very few people, if anyone ever does that, but it should be coming sort of down and across at a steady rate. And if the left tilt, and the shoulder down, and the side bend to the left, whatever you want to call it, happens at just a little bit too high a rate to keep up with the extension and turn that's going on, you can see that the head starts to drop. So just food for thought in regards to um, the overall movement of the takeaway. There's far less rolling of the club. Left shoulder drops a little bit too high a rate. It's not that it's working down is, is wrong. It's just doing it slightly too high a rate. So I would just suggest de-emphasizing that. You know, if you're focusing on that, just back off a little bit on that and just consider that whilst we do need to do it we don't need to put as much in as soon but overall I quite like the movement very stable and the positioning of your head and the overall position at the top of the back swing at P4 is just a transformation really compared to what it used to be uh, very difficult to control the club at the top because of the speed at which you took it back the eye line was sort of was over here somewhere, the left shoulder was just pushing everything around, way too much emphasis on the turn, uh, right leg would straighten too much too soon, etc, etc. So, you know, transformation in regards to that, so well done on that regard. And again, very stable, just that little drop of the head. Change the direction, you can see the linear going in there. When you look face on, hips would move towards the target slightly, P1 to P4, which is fine. They then progressively move towards the target in the downswing. The hip slide does not go in at such a dramatic rate. The right knee does no longer kick out towards the ball to target line at such a dramatic rate. You can see there by P6. Knees in its address flex. Doesn't go substantially beyond that point. Head's dropping back a little bit through the hip. But for me, that's just a, a consequence of the head going down and forward a little bit. P1 to P2.53. That point was slightly ahead of the box. We've gone down. We then start to move back in the box. And then, again, just a calming down of that sort of linear movement. Does it, we have it in there, do we need it in there that much? Uh, maybe not quite, but again, so minor that it's not going to have a, a dramatic effect on the outcome of your shot. Movement through the ball, far tidier than it was. 
Love the look of that face on the down the line's not too shabby either. You can see that the rate of closure on the club face here when you look down the line is not massively high either. So, you know, for someone who's pulling the golf ball, you'd perhaps initially expect to see a little bit more closure on the club face, but that's not the case. And overall, I like the action. I think you've done a great job uh, in transforming that from where it was, you know, maybe 18 months ago. So well done in that regard. So on to the pull shot that you've been describing to me, courtesy of Twitter. If initially, we've got to consider setup. And this may seem too simple to be true. Um, but in many cases, with better players like yourself, it doesn't actually take that much. Uh, to alter things, so just a touch wider in the stance at P1. Flow the right foot out just a little bit more at P1. Left foot's fine. And then what we need to be considering then is the location of the handle. I would like to see you push the handle forward more. As you push the handle forward more so the feeling would be that the butt of the club points towards the left hip socket or the back of the gloved hand is more towards the middle of the left thigh in doing that you're going to set the address plane line and the loft of the golf club slightly more to the right not as much as that graphic might suggest but certainly a little bit more to the right now, obviously, we're pulling the golf ball, the path and the face are slightly too much to the left. As we push the handle forward, we point the loft. So let's say this is where we are at the moment. Address plane line and loft. If we push the handle forward, the address plane line would shift out to the right slightly. And the face angle would shift out to the right slightly. So you're realigning the swing's direction, courtesy of just changing the handle location at P1. Now, obviously P1 is fine, you're trying to establish as many things that are appropriate to the shot that you want to try and execute, uh, but we're going to have to move, and we're going to have to make this swing, and things can change during the downswing. So if we then consider the, the movement that we make coming into the golf ball and through the golf ball, I'm just going to play these through for you now. Super position at the top. Love the wrist condition. Really like that move that you make now. That's fantastic. That's so much better than it was a couple of sessions ago. So the right shoulder working down properly. Getting back into flexion. Keep working on that. You could keep that move. Going back to a tidying up process. You could keep that move going a little bit longer. But having said that, it's not really appropriate to the shot that you want to get rid of. So whilst aesthetically it might look a little bit tidier, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to stop you pulling the golf ball. So we take a little look here at things that would help, would be producing that little pull shot that you get. Sweet spot's pretty much in line with the hands of P6. Now... If you're pulling the golf ball with driver, you need to consider that because we're not hitting down on it as much, we need the sweet spot maybe an inch or two in behind the hands at P6. And that should be done by having a little bit more linear or having the pelvis a little bit more forward. But I'd advise you to do that at setup. So just when you're setting up to the golf ball with driver, just have the pelvis a little bit closer to the target than you would have with your irons because of where the ball's located, etc. Now, if you're not pulling it with driver, then just ignore that advice, okay? So, but if you are, and you, you, can, you know, the footage you've sent me here regarding the pull is with the irons, so I'm just trying to sort of read between the lines and, and sort of think in terms of what could be happening. But back to the irons. So, sweet spot in line with the hands, which is fine, because we're going to be hitting down on this ball, and the hitting down on the ball produces an outward force. So, if we've got an inline swing and we're hitting down on it slightly and again I know I'm preaching to the converted here because you sort of understand all this but 
we're going to have a sort of outward force. So we're pretty good to go at that point. Now, as we then start to progress, the thing I see is the shaft going a little bit too vertical at impact. So the right hand flying wedge is coming out a little bit too soon. The lead wrist starts to extend, so we go from being relatively flexed at P6 to starting to extend at P7.2. So it's only slight, but as those wrist angles start to come out, the sweet spot starts to move out in front of you pretty rapidly. So I'm just going to clear those lines out now and just consider what's happening with the sweet spot. So wrist angles come out. Club starts to move out. We're coming into the golf ball there now from a relatively in line position. So we've gone from sweet spot in line or slightly behind the hands to kicking out in front of the hands. So there is a sort of cupping of the lead wrist through the hip. As you do that, the wrist angles will also come out. So you'll get more on the deviation as you're coming through. And the swing just goes a fraction left of where you're intending. So what we need to do ideally is to keep the sweet spot in a little bit more. I like where it is at six. And I'd like to see it just stay in for a little bit longer. Not by, there's various ways we obviously we can do this. Um, you could slide the hips more, but do you need to? You could bowl the wrist more. Seems very popular these days, but do you need to? Or do you just need to consider that, going back to what we said at setup, if at P7 your shaft was more forward, the handle location was more towards the lead hip, what impact would that have on the overall swing direction? We watch what happens with your sweet spot as it comes through and appreciate the camera's not telling us what a monitor would tell us. But I've used the monitor long enough to sort of figure out that, you know, when I'm looking at this, I'm generally getting the data off a player that is suggesting this player's swing direction is maybe four to the left. Um, could be three to the left, but you get the idea. So the general direction, the sweet spot is travelling through the impact area is a little bit too much to the left. Now, if the handle was forward, and that's pretty typical of someone whose club goes from, or club head goes from behind the hands. To in front of the hands. In two clicks on the keyboard. So two frames of that camera club's gone from behind the hands to beyond the hands. There's a lot of really good stuff in this swing, but it's this area here that you need to consider. So from P6 to P7.2, you go from bold to cupped. When I say bold to cupped, the bowl comes out too fast. So from a, from a very flexed position to a slightly extended position. Which will shift the swing's direction to the left. And with enough accumulator 3, will also produce a face angle that's going left. With the driver, you could end up with too, dyna too much dynamic loft. 
you know, bottom edge strikes, any, any number of things. I mean, at the end of the day, there's so many variables involved with golf. You know, you can wax lyrical about numerous things that you could do. Um, this is just my opinion in regards to what you need to do. So when I look at you at impact, if we were more on the red line, the likelihood would be that through the hit viewed from down the line, if the shaft was more forward, the swing's direction would be more out to the right, and the sweet spot would be travelling on a more neutral sort of route through the ball. Wouldn't be as excessive as, as excessive as that, but you get the idea. So I would go handle forward at P1 and work on trying to maintain that position through through the hit, the location of the handle at P1, try and return that the club into that position at P7. Um, as you do that, you may also find that this shoulder geometry starts to tidy up. As the wrist angles come out from P6, there's no reason really your chest should stall at this point. Uh, but what we see is as the wrist angles start to come out, see that the shoulder tilts just steepen fractionally and we've got a chest from P4 when we look at it from down the line we've got a right shoulder that's working down and around down and around down and around chest opening up and then suddenly it just sort of stalls a little bit and the shoulders steepen and that sort of impression here were shoulders are relatively steep don't get the impression I'm going to get that when I look at this transition. Transition, good. And then the shoulders steepen. That's a mechanism to keep the club inside. When the wrist angles are coming out, it's a way of preventing the club from coming across excessively. You know, you know, it's it's, it's trying to match components, isn't it? Some some are appropriate and some aren't. You know, we've got wrist angles that are coming out too fast, and as a result, the body's just not quite opening up at the rate it could in order to satisfy the type of geometry you're trying to create an impact. If the handle was further forward, you wouldn't have to do that. And consequently, you could start to learn to open up in a little bit more appropriate manner. Um, wrist angle's coming out too fast from P6, and you kept that opening up at the same rate, you'd pull the ball even further left. So it's trying to keep the wrists flatter at setup, push the handle forward at P1, And then, I'll get that up at the side as well for us. Really happy with your progress overall, though. Can't, uh, can't thank you enough for that. I think it's been great. It's been, uh, it's been a really interesting journey. Um, I've enjoyed watching this one progress. I know you've got a lot going on with your life, with the family, etc. Uh, and you've not an instructor close by, so I think you've done really well in that regard, Miles. Um, just keep adding the detail, keep working on it. Uh, it's great to see. There you go. So keys are to widen the stance a little bit at P1. Flow the right foot out a little bit more at P1. Push the handle more forward at P1. Butter the club to the left hip socket. Foot flowed out and stance a little bit wider. And then at impact, try and return it to the same place which is going to move the address plane line a little bit more to the right, allowing you to have a path that's going a little bit more to the right, courtesy of a slightly downward angle of attack. Good luck with it. Keep me posted. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact me. Obviously, you've got Twitter, you've got the email, and you've got Facebook. Good luck with it, and look forward to watching some further progress throughout 2017. Well done.